Hello, good evening. Good evening. Right, can you see section four? Yes. Yes. All right. So if you're ready, can I start the timer? Yeah. Okay, started the timer. And here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, let's begin our station. Can you tell me, sorry, can you tell me what is this orange shaded area called? It's called the anatomy talisman box. Yes, can you tell me the boundaries of this uh, area? Okay, posteriorly and medially, there is the strongest tendon and Anteriorly and laterally, there is a structural system. You have to label uh, yes. structure A, B, and, and C. Yes. Okay. A, this is the extensor bolus fungus, and B, this is the abductor bolus fungus. C, for extensor bolus bases. Yes. Can you tell me uh, what are the contents of an optical structure? Okay, it contains the radial nerves and overlies the kephalic fan. Okay, and? The superficial branch of the radial nerve. And? The radial artery. Can you tell me the course of the radial nerve? Okay, it is uh, arise from the posterior cord of the brachial process and transfers the triangular space of the arm, then descends into the posterior uh, extensor of the arm, and then it arises in the anterior lateral surface of the forearm, which is uh, and gives off the uh, posterior interosseous nerve, which supplies the extensor muscle to the forearm. Okay. Can you tell me which nerve is damaged or what is the dermal supply of uh, this area D? Dermatome of the, the dorsal region. branch of the under nerve. Okay. Can you tell me it. what? Uh, what are the muscles? Uh, what are the muscles which are innervated by the radial nerve? The radial nerve supplies the triceps muscle and the, the muscle. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. In the hand, uh, supply the extensor pulse longus and extensor pulse GCs. And uh, supply all the extensor of the hand. Okay. What is the importance of uh, injury of the radial nerve at the level of humerus? At the level of the humerus, there will be a uh, wrist drop and finger drop and loss of sensation of the status dorsal wrist. Can you tell me uh, the attachment of extension? There will be sensation of the help of extension. Can you tell me the attachment of extensor retinoculum? Uh, extensor retinoculum, okay, it's, uh, there, is, is, uh, there is proximal and distal attachment. Yes. Proximal, it is attached to the tubercle of scaphoid and the yes. form, and distal, it is uh, attached to the hamid and the hook of the hamid. Can you tell and me how many, form. yes, how many canals there are or how many uh, Extensor retinoculum is divided into what? What passes? There is the extensor the, digitorum. Yes. There is uh, there is the extensor digitorum profundus and the extensor digitorum superficial. Each one is have uh, four tendons, and also there is uh, the, it contains the median nerves. Yes. And the flexor pulse. Okay. All right. Can you tell me uh, if a patient complains of a pain in this region, uh, which you call your nocturnal snuff box, then what is the most likely injure, uh, structure which is damaged or injured? The scaphoid bone. Okay. Can you tell me how the scaphoid bone gets its blood supply? Okay, it is the, uh, there is branches the yeah, there is the distal and the lateral branch of the radial artery. Yes. Uh, which supplies the distal and the middle of the bone. The, Can you, yes. The one is this branch through the retrograde flow. Can you identify the structures labeled from A to E in this upper left? Diagram, it's okay. A and B. What is this? A, A this is scaphoid bone. Yes, B. And B, this is uh, the, radio, the distal end of the radius. Okay, C, please. This is the first metacarpal bone. Yes, D, please. It's the lunate. Yes, please. E, please. Is the head of the Anna. Okay. Can you please tell me? Where are, where are the questions? Okay. Can you please tell me if um, describe you were telling me you told me already the blood supply of the scaphoid bone. Then uh, what may be the clinical consequences if you uh, miss the scaphoid fracture? What can happen? There will be necrosis of the bone. A vascular necrosis of the bone, yes. A vascular necrosis. Can you tell me which part of the scaphoid bone is most prone to this complication? The proximal part, but it's this uh, this close supply through the red Okay, can you name three other bones uh, within the upper or lower limb, right? And they can also have the same risk and complication as scaphoid bone? The lower limb or upper limb, anywhere. Three other bones, if you can tell me, please. There are more. The head of the together. femur. Okay. And? The head of the femur. And the head of the humerus. Head of the humerus. No. I don't. Femoral head or and think. Lunate. What happens? It's rare, but it can happen. Lunate. And 
head of the second and third metatarsal bones. There are names for all these special names. And navicular bone, thallus. Navicular bone. Yes. And thallus as well. There are special names given to... Okay. Can you tell me one... Um, in the absence of in the absence of trauma wait in the absence of trauma or uh, what other medical conditions uh, or the risk factors they that can also give the complementing the diagnosing they also complete contemplating this diagnosis they also contemplate yeah, diagnosis of avascular necrosis so there are other uh, certain medical conditions uh, which can also uh, become as a risk factor and they can also contemplate the same diagnosis. But in the absence of trauma, you have to think. Mm -hmm. If a patient has not had trauma, then what other conditions can also lead to this um, kind of situation? And there are many. So you have to think what other things or conditions can uh, coarctation of the aorta. Um, think okay, uh, excessive use of corti corticosteroids, right? And then autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lup lupus erythematosus, and then sickle cell disease, uh, exposure to radiotherapy that, that can also lead to a vascular necrosis. Without trauma, okay. right? Oh, yes. All right. Can you tell me the dermatome of hand? Okay, it is arm. Uh, uh, hold on. The tip of the mediary, there is the eight. And uh, lateral in the forearm, C8 is in the forearm. C7. In the arm is the C7, tip of yes. The, uh, yes. Thumb. Tip of the thumb is C6. Oh. The tip of the thumb and the tip of the index and the middle by C. Mm, index and, the lateral and middle finger is C7. The lateral set of the... Yeah, it's C8. Okay, can you tell me the attachment of, uh, we haven't asked flexor retinoculum because we are covering hand and a carpal tunnel, uh, the hand and uh, an optical snuff box. Bell is gone, but I want you to tell me, so hand will be covered as well. Attachment okay. of an optical snuff box. An optical snuff box. The yes, boundaries. Please. Yes, please. And the attachment? Okay, the boundary of the acrylic snuffbox is the laterally extensor process fungus and posterior resistance and anteriorly there is upper turbulence fungus, the floor by the scaphoid bone, and the apex by the uh, proximally there is the thyroid process of the radius and distally by the apex of the triangle. Okay. Can you tell me when there is a uh, pain felt, especially at night or when the patient is diabetic or patient is using hands a lot, then it can be compressing which nerve? The median nerve, scarborough tunnel syndrome. Okay. What should be the management of uh, carpal tunnel syndrome? Uh, it's by fair, Gary, by the relief, uh, Compression of the flexor retinaculum. Is that it? Uh, you yes. cannot offer any conservative management. You'll go back and you'll read, okay, and then you'll tell us. Okay. the management of uh, carpal tunnel syndrome uh, and how you will say it in exam. Okay. Okay. What more I can ask you? 
Yes, mostly I think I've covered. The management, the diagnosis of scaphoid fracture, how is it done? By the scaphoid fracture? Yes. Patient is complaining of pain in hand. How would you confirm the diagnosis? By x-ray. Is it always um, concluding x-ray? No. Yes, then tell me properly, please. How would you confirm? By history and examination. Yes. And I'll do X-ray or CT scan or MRI. Why all, all, why do you need CT scan and MRI? Either MRI or CT scan. In which condition you do what? Can anyone else help Dr. Mohamed? Uh, in the condition of scaphoid fat. Yeah. So, okay, you've done x-ray. It's not uh, outruling scaphoid fracture. Then you'll do either CT scan or MRI. Which one? Why both? Okay, you'll okay. read more. And then you'll come and you'll tell me next time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Dr. Sunday. Uh, history taken? How are you, Dr. Fatimata? Good? Yes, I'm okay. I'm good. Uh, do you want to go for your station today or some other day? No, I'm, I am still in the hospital. Yes, I'm still in the hospital. <laughs> you're, in the, uh, you're still at work? Hospital. Yes. Okay. Not, at, not at work, no, admission. Oh, you're admitted. Hmm? Oh, oh, that's bad. I hope you'll get well soon. How are you feeling now? Yeah, yeah, yeah much better. Thanks that you still came. It's mm -hmm. better, like, yeah. It's better to join. <laughs> yeah, it's better. I hope you can yeah, join us soon mm -hmm. as a candidate, not like this. You know, it's not good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. Most welcome. Get well soon, dear. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Sunday, are you in the mood of uh, presenting any station? He got disconnected. So, if no one else is interested, we can maybe call it the end. This is coming back. Uh, would you want to do it yourself or you can help Dr. Sunday? Dr. Aicha? Yes, Any history statement? Yes, Any? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Then I'm bringing it. And who can help her? Dr. Sunday or Dr. Bilal, who would help her? Dr. Sunday, can you help Dr. Aisha? No. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Would you be able to help the girl? Yeah. 
uh, with history taking I'll, i'll try because or yeah, uh, i'll try i just yes. Put okay. my router. Hopefully, the network will be stable. Okay. We can wait. Okay. All right. If both of you are ready, can I start the timer? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Starting the timer, and here is your question. Hello. Yes. Can you see the station? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Good. Hello. Yes. So, if you have read so, and understood, kindly begin your history taking. Okay. Hello, I am Dr. Aisha, one of the surgical house officers. Can I confirm your name and date of birth, sir? Uh, I'm John, forty-three years old. Okay, John. Can you just uh, tell us your reason of coming here today? So, doctor, uh, I've been having a, a pain in my back. So, and uh, uh, the pain started suddenly. So, and uh, uh, the pain has been, I've been feeling the pain for the past 24 hours, and it's very, very severe. Okay, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Uh, are you comfortable uh, for uh, the questioning session, or you want me to give you some painkillers? Doctor, I would like a painkiller, please, because the pain is very much. Okay, so uh, first uh, I will arrange some energies for you, sir, and then uh, then we'll start this uh, continue our history taking session. Uh, can you just uh, let me know? Are you comfortable in this position, or do you need a, a couch or any other thing? I think I'm all right. Okay. Okay. So, can you uh, tell in detail? Uh, you said that the pain started in last 24 hours, and it is sudden and onset, and it's very really severe in intensity. The uh, what other associated complaints you have along with this pain? Uh, what I noticed is that uh, the pain. So it started, you know, uh, when I wanted to lift the heavy load, yeah, about so, and uh, uh, nothing really much except that. Maybe when I, I try to walk, it's very, very painful. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. Um, can you describe the character of your pain for me? Yeah, so the pain is kind of uh, uh, squeezing. So from my back, lower back, then it moves down to my uh, to my thigh. Okay, and does it radiate anywhere? Yes, it moved to my to to my buttocks and to my thigh, to part of my thigh. Okay, okay. And um, uh, do you have any uh, fever along with this? Uh, no, doctor. Okay. And uh, uh, what do you uh, do to uh, make your pain better? Well, do you have uh, any so when you first started, so at first when. Well, I use a uh, uh, Panadol, but it, it didn't work. So, but it will leave when I try to lie down a bit and so I'll try to massage for me a bit, but that didn't, later it didn't help us. Okay. And um, uh, along with that, uh, uh, do you have any bowel complaints? 
Um, not that I know. Of. So I have not been to the toilet since the pain started. So, but any other, I don't have any other complaint. Any urinary complaints? Come again, please. Any urinary complaint? Any complaints with opening your water? Um. I so I've been having difficulty to pass uh urine. So. Uh, so and uh, you know I usually you know rush to the toilet to to, to pee. Apart from that, uh, there's no other thing. So you're not uh, able to pass your urine, what I understood. No, no, no. I can pass, but it's kind of difficult for me. So and okay, I usually so rush to the toilet. It anytime I feel I have the urge to, you know, to pee. Okay, and can you give a score to your pain for me? Uh, what do you mean, doctor, by score? It means that uh, if uh, I've been asked, if you've been asked to score your pain with the zero being the lowest possible pain and ten being the worst possible pain, so where would you uh, 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 give your uh, score to your pain? Where would you well, place right, your pain? Right now, I would say about six to seven. Okay. And um, uh, do you have a means where when the pain started, have you had lifted any weight or any no, heavy object you no, tried no. to move that? Uh, the pain started when I was, I was trying to you know, lift the, the weight in my garage. So, but ever okay. since then, I, I didn't try to um, lift any weight again. Okay. Any history of any, any other trauma? Uh, no, not that I know of. Okay. And uh, so can I ask some question relating to your lifestyle, if it's okay? Okay. okay. So uh, do you smoke? No, doctor. And drinking? Um, just um, socially, not so much. And can, who do you, uh, um, who uh, uh, lives with you at home? With my wife and children. Okay. And uh, do you have any significant past uh, uh, medical history? Uh, no, doctor. Any allergies? No, doctor. And what do you uh, do for a uh, living Re regarding your work? Um, basically, I, I work uh, in the workshop, like a factory. So and my work involves uh, carrying, you know, every load and stuff like that. Okay, okay, that's um that's understandable. Um, uh, so uh, um, any other um any other previous surgical history? No, doctor, no. Okay, and do you feel any uh, uh change in the sensation of your uh, lower limbs and upper limbs and arms and neck along with the spleen uh, uh, the only thing i noticed is that uh, on the right side where i feel the pain so i feel numb in my legs you feel numb in your both legs or on the right oh, side only the right, the right side yeah so and that's where right i feel side. the pain uh, and i feel like you know this tingling um feeling Okay. And apart from that, your general health as well? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much, sir, for your time. So, um, I, idea concern and expectation. Yeah. So, what are your uh, ideas regarding uh, uh, this problem? What do you think that you are suffering from? I don't really know. I don't know yet. But I think it might have something to do with the weight that I lifted because the weight was kind of heavy for me. Okay, and uh, what are your expectations from us regarding uh, your problem? Uh, without this pain, I can't go back to work. So I really need to get rid of this pain so I can resume work as soon as possible. Okay, we'll try our best to uh, make you uh, pain free and get the solution of your problem and investigate properly. And just be sure that uh, you are in best uh, possible hands and uh, we'll give you the best treatment possible. Do you have any questions? Uh, no more questions. Okay. okay.
that's great so i will just refer you um, to the any &E department so that you can just get your uh, pain relief medications and uh, then we can uh, you will have some investigations like uh, x rays done and then can you we can... summarize your case now okay uh, so today I have been asked to take history from 42-year-old uh, gentleman who uh, presented uh, with the history of uh, lower back pain that is there from last four hours, but it has been increased in intensity from last 24 hours. The pain is sudden and onset, very severe in intensity. The patient uh, scores his pain uh, 6 out of 10, and uh, the pain also radiates to his uh, thigh and lower leg. Uh, along with this, the patient is complaining of numbness in the right uh, leg and feet. And uh, the patient... So uh, what's your differential diagnosis? My differential diagnosis, it could be a, a corda equina syndrome. It could be lumbar disc yes. prolapse. And uh, it could be... Um, um, it can be a, only a yeah. functional back pain as well okay what are the red flag symptoms that uh, you should pay more attention to urinary incontinence bowel incontinence and uh, yes. um, there is um, the numbness paresthesias yes. and um, and uh, age of age usually above 50 age years. Of the patient, yes yes and any history of cancer, weight loss? Yes, or any. Or there is progressing worsening of pain, not relieved even by rest, and history of severe trauma. Okay, can you tell me what are the investigations that you'll ask for this patient? I would, uh, I would uh, start with the full blood count with the inflammatory marker CRP, ESR, and uh, UNEs and uh, LFTs as well. And then I would get a chest X-ray and X-ray uh, lumbar uh, lumbar spine, AP and lateral views, and then uh, get an MRI done. And uh, if uh, um, urgent MRI, if I suspect the lead flexus symptoms, and uh, get an orthopedic uh, sur surgery. How should this patient be managed if you suspect it to be Cordaquina syndrome? Then this patient should be managed on urgent uh, basis. The patient yes. should get his X-ray and MRI as soon as possible. There will be urgent involvement of neurosurgeon. Patient should be having a pain relief and strict bed rest. And uh, um, then uh, uh, with, uh, with the uh, opinion and discussion, multidisciplinary, we can decide about the surgical options. And you'll t uh, take uh, contact with the social worker? to take yes. care of the patient afterwards. Okay. 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 Yeah, good. Well, right, now, okay. It was very good considering you have taken the history after so long, but my concern was that you took, uh, this is, if you can, you can, uh, if you want, you can tell, discuss this, but it may not be asked. Anyway, okay, uh, my concern was that you took more time uh, yes. You should have, like, when first six, after six minutes, bell went, you could have just um, uh, tried to finish it off. And then after that, you, I reminded you of uh, ice because for history taking, you should always complete it with idea, concern, and expectation. And one history of weight loss or appetite you have not asked, I think. Yes, ma'am. But it was you did ask about the history of trauma uh, yes associated features you asked uh, about the fever but appetite maybe you did not or history of weight loss so you can rule out uh, carcinoma mm, i will be regular now so then yeah <laughs> then it will come <laughs> yeah and the time time as well because yeah you yes, took approximately two minutes and then I asked you to so yeah, for history yeah. taking it should have been six minutes it, it, it became eight minutes and then I think yeah remaining was okay so yeah. mm -hmm. so, can I ask one go thank you so much ma'am for feedback uh, ma'am can I ask this yes. question that for ideas and concern how we're going to ask the patient means uh, it's saying it, it looks similar to me what are your ideas regarding your problem and what are your concerns 
um how can we uh, it's uh, yeah you can ask like this you can ask uh, what do you think uh, you are suffering with so it's idea see so concern is what is your biggest concern biggest concern can be because patient might think okay it's maybe cancer it's maybe this prolapse maybe i would not be able to this is worrying concern and idea are two different things idea is what patient think think patient is have uh, suffering from and concern could be like patient might think that no patient can never become normal back to normal again like people are talking about corona these days that uh, this uh, no, normal will not come again so that is there and expectation is that maybe they have come for diagnosis maybe they have come for pain relief so this is their expectation they will tell you i has come here for my diagnosis i want you to diagnose it or i want you to relieve my pain forever this is their expectation so it's three different things okay okay ma'am uh, so thank you thank you so much try to thanks Yes, Dr. Sandeep, are you in the mood of presenting any station today? Uh, no, ma'am. No? Okay then. Did you say yes or did you say no? I said no. All because right, my network is not that stable. Yeah, that's that's fine. No problem. That's fine. Thank you. You still helped helped us. So thanks a lot.